Our speaker this week is Miguel Angel Fiel, and he will be talking about four families of polynomials in spectral graph theory. Okay, thank you, Sabrina. Thank you also to Sofia for inviting me to, to this seminar. Uh, well, my idea is to uh, to give some my uh, uh, first part about a kind of little survey about four families of polynomials, and then in the second part uh, to apply to them, to apply them to the recent results. It will be the online. It will be the the online. The outline, sorry, uh, we begin with uh, presenting the polynomials after the introduction. And then uh, in the second part, we uh, will recall something about uh, the independence number. Uh, we applied uh, this polynomial to the K independent number, and in particular, what we call maximally independent vertices. Okay, this uh, the abstract is only to remark the, what we what could we uh, say the keywords, no? The polynomials, uh, they are related in all the cases with the spectrum of the graph. Uh, we present some known results uh, like uh, or, uh, spectral, what is called the spectral C theorem, characterizing distant regularity. And then uh, I said before, we. Uh, also discuss some recent results uh, about the k independence number and the relationship between the, the basically the two types of bounds uh, about the, the independent number a parameter a related parameter that the inertial called the inertial from Beckovic and the ratio on Hoffman bounds. So let me first introduce some basic notation uh, as usual. Uh, present the spectrum of a graph in two ways. If we want to express, remark which are the multiplicity, uh, we use this notation. And we are, if we are speaking uh, about the, different, the, uh, the, the number of eigenvalues, including repetition, repetition sorry, uh, we also use uh, this uh, other notation. And then for the minimum of, of given a polynomial, for the minimum of the polynomial uh, and the, at, the, at the mesh setting the, uh, the spectral radius, we de denote in this way, no? lambda of p is the minimum of the value of the polynomial uh, uh, in the mesh. Okay, uh, we use uh, the concept of world regular, uh, world regularity, it was introduced by Gottsil and McKay. Uh, we recall that uh, a graph is more regular if the number of coset walks of any length, of any given length, in fact, from a vertex to itself does not depend on the choice of the vertex. And this allows us to, uh, to give an, a natural generalization that uh, we say that uh, a graph is k partially well regular if the same conditions uh, uh, holds, but only for uh, the number of coset walks of a given length at most k. So uh, every simple graph is, is k partially well regular for k 0, 1. This is obvious. And also every regular graph is too partially well regular because uh, the number of walls in a, uh, at each vertex is just the degree. Uh, of course, G, G is K partially well regular for any K, if and only if it's well regular. And uh, there are different kinds of graphs which are uh, well regular. The most famous uh, ones perhaps are the distant regular graphs. Every distant regular graph is well regular, but the converse does not hold in general. Uh, we use also the idea of k independent number that come from the, the what is no more than the independent number of, of, the, of the power of, of a graph. So the, we could say that simply that the k independent number of a graph is the much, you know, in this way, is the maximum number of vertices which are mutually at distance uh, greater than k. And of course, uh, when you you take k equal one, this is just the independent number, 
and alpha k of g is the same that the independent number of, of the k power of g. Well, let's go uh, to the to present four recent families of polynomial that uh, I will like I will try uh, would like to try to convince you that perhaps some kind of some of these polynomials could be used in in, in general in uh, in spectral graph theory and these are uh, the definitions. Uh, first, the alternating polynomials introduced. Uh, by these authors uh, uh, are the, you could say them as a discrete version of the Chebyshev polynomials, because we try to maximize the value of, of the, when used, we use the, the subpoena that's K, we, we mean always that the, the, the polynomial uh, has degree K, okay? Then the, in, the, in the case of alternating polynomial, we try to maximize the, the, the value of at the, at the maximum eigenvalue, uh, but uh, with this condition, uh, the, the module of the other values cannot exceed uh, one. And this means that they can be, then can be can computed by using a linear, uh, solving a linear programming problem. Another kind of Polynomials are what, what we call the predistance polynomial. The predistance polynomial are no more than the a generalization of the distance polynomials for the case of distant regular graphs. So uh, in this case is, is a sequence of orthogonal polynomials with respect to this scalar product, this uh, um, usual scalar product of uh, also of matrices. You can use also for the this product for matrices, uh, and then uh, and we normalize them in, in this way. This makes sense because if you know that in a, in a sequence of orthogonal polynomial, the value of the maximum uh, number is always greater than, than zero. And so, of course, they can be uh, computed by using the Gramm-Smith uh, method, for instance. Well, let's see uh, an example of alternating polynomials. In this case, we computed them uh, for the, the hypercube of dimension five, or Hemming graph, uh, degree two, dimension five. And it, it is a, a graph with diameter five, uh, sits different eigenvalues, like this one, of course, this is bipartite graph. And the corresponding alternating polynomials and their values at the point, at the mesh uh, points, are these ones. These are the polynomials, and this is the the maximum uh, the, the value the maximum value uh, at, at five, that is the spectral uh, radius. Note that when uh, the the uh, the more uh, high is the degree, the 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 greatest uh, the greatest is also the, this value. And in the case of, of uh, k equal four, you get value 31. Note that the the the, I mean, the hypercube of dimension five has in fact 32 vertices. So this is one vertice less than the number of vertices. This is not a casualty. This is because the antipodal, uh, there, there is some results uh, concerning one when uh, the, the the number of of this uh, the highest degree alternating polynomial is uh, the number of vertices minus one. You get some uh, structural res res uh, results. And as I said before, now know that the pk takes uh, k plus one alternating values at the mesh exactly as does the Chebyshev polynomials uh, in the in, in the whole interval. So you see, for instance. Uh, in the in the maximum degree, you have one minus one, one minus one, and so on. Well, this is uh, just a, a plot of the alternating polynomial for this. Now, these are the, the highest degree polynomial, and and so th th these are the others. Well, let's let's see the other two families of polynomial more recently proposed. Uh, the first of them are called the minor polynomials, 
And in this case, we try to minimize the trace of these polynomials uh, when evaluated at the adjacent symmetries, uh, imposing this condition of the values of the polynomial of the main must be non-negative and the value of, of theta zero uh, must be one. And the other kind of polynomials, what we call uh, the sign polynomials, uh, proposed by this author in the, the recent papers. I, I forgot to say that the, the, what uh, is the, the new results uh, are joint work with these people, okay? So in this case, we try to minimize uh, the non-negative uh, values of the polynomial, imposing that the trace of this polynomial must be zero and, uh, and if it's the minimum, uh, this it can be uh, any constant because these are defined up to a multiplicative constant. Well, some examples of the minor polynomials are these ones. This is clearly this one. This is the, the, the one polynomial. Uh, we uh, managed to, uh, to find that the degree two polynomial is this one. Uh, uh, at the other extreme, uh, the, the degree d minus one uh, takes only one non-zero value at the mesh, and in general, it seems to be located at one of the extremes of the mesh. And it also, it is interesting to know that the maximum degree minor polynomial is up to a constant, uh, the same as the Hohmann polynomial. Recall that the Hohmann polynomial characterizes the regularity of, of a graph by saying that this polynomial evaluated at the adjacent symmetries uh, gives you the all one uh, methods, if and only if the graph is regular. Okay. And for the case equal three, we have uh, this was a partial result. Uh, Usually it can be taken as the as this product of the first two. In some cases, this is, is gives an exact value, but more recently, uh, in this in this same in this seminar, uh, this author Gabby Newman and Sharnan uh, gave a polynomial that is uh, this this G here, the G with imposing these conditions. And uh, basically is the same as the minor polynomial of degree three, so up to a constant and a translation, you see. Uh, this is the minimum of the value and so on. You, you, you get, you get uh, in this way, you can get the, uh, the minor polynomial of degree three. And of course, one open problem is to try to find other, other minor polynomial with degree between three, greater than three and less than d minus one, or at least, uh, at, least uh, at least uh, smaller than, than d, okay? In the case of the Hamming graph, uh, here you see which are the values uh, of the minor polynomial that you know that the condition now is that here is, the, is always one. And then as you try to minimize the, the trace, what you get is uh, many zeros. When the, the degree is high, you get ma many zeros. And in this case, this is the conditions for the Hohmann polynomial up to a constant, you see? Because in the Hohmann polynomial, uh, all the values at the, at the different uh, non-trivial eigenvalues might be zero, okay? This has, uh, is a plot for these uh, polynomials. You see, here is always one. Uh, it seems uh, we haven't uh, we haven't not proved yet, but it seems that uh, all the all the other polynomial that not exceed the value one. Okay, but uh, we have no proof until now of this fact. And uh, to com just to compare, this is a bipartite case. The Hamming graph is a bipartite graph. Uh, and it's antipodal. And the Johnson graph is another example of antipodal graph, but in this case, it is not bipartite. You see the difference between the bipartite case and the non-bipartite case, okay? Well, 
uh, let's go uh, to some applications. Uh, with respect to the, the K alternative polynomial, uh, here you have two of results. One of is uh, a condition for the, the diameter to be at, at most K. This is uh, worth following different authors as Van Chung, uh, James, uh, Van Damme, uh, Delorme, etc. Okay, they, they have also uh, some kind of weird results. When some conditions happen, that in, in some cases involve only two or three eigenvalues, in this case, you, you, uh, you must compute this, uh, as I said before, you must compute this uh, value, uh, taking into account all the different eigenvalues, but there are partial results taking only uh, some of the eigenvalues. And, you can assure if this uh, equality inequality holds that the diameter is, is bounded by k. And similarly, you can also use the alternating polynomial to bound the, uh, the k and dependence number using this formula. With respect to the predistance polynomial, uh, you have here two uh, characterizations of distance regularity. Uh, a graph is distance regular. A regular graph is distance regular if and only if either uh, you have this matrix equation, uh, the highest degree uh, predistant polynomial evaluated at A is the, is the distance matrix. Only on, with, with this uh, unique condition, you can assure that the graph is distance regular or this other one, but it's the numeric, uh, uh, in fact, it's only a numeric equation. This is what is called, uh, this is the spectral access, uh, what is com com computed with using the eigenvalues and, uh, and, the, and, uh, and the, the multiplicities. And this is the spectral, uh, the, the, sorry, the, the, the access, it, it is the mean of the number of vertices at maximum distance from each vertex. So with this condition, you can assure that the graph uh, is uh, distant regular. With respect to uh, the, uh, the sign polynomials and the minor polynomials, you have uh, these uh, bounds. Yeah, we will discuss this. Uh, these uh, equalities uh, later because they correspond to the latest uh, later results. But in any case, just to give an example, no? in, in both cases, you can use uh, the sign polynomials on the minor polynomials to upper bound uh, the uh, k independent number. Well, let's go to now to uh, on the independent number. What can we say uh, on the independent number first? Uh, these are two well-known results about the uh, uh, upper bound for the independent number. This is this is due to Vekovic, but it is also called uh, inertia bound, and this is uh, due to Holman uh, published result. It is also called uh, ratio bound. Uh, okay, these are well known. These are some examples of graphs of uh, that's a value of the independent number. What is the value of the inertial bound? Uh, what, what is the bound of the ratio bound? Note that in, in all the cases, in all these examples, the ratio bound is better or equal, at least equal to the, to the inertia bound, you see? The ratio bound in general seem to be uh, always better than the, the inertia bound. And very close also to the chat volume that you see, okay? But uh, then an actual question is, if this is a general uh, result, is ratio bound better, always, always better than the inertia bound? 
Well, the answer is not. And here you have uh, an instance uh, for the known triangular free strong irregular graphs. You know, they are uh, apart from the trivial cases of, of uh, complete by pi graphs, there are only seven uh, triangular free strong irregular graphs. That is uh, the least. And in, in two cases, in the Klebsch graphs and in the Heyman, Heyman Singh graphs, it happened that the inertial bound is better than the ratio bound. Not only is better, but is also tight, you see, in the cliffs and in the in the Hyman sinks. Yeah. And, and in all the other cases, the ratio bound is, is also tight for this for these examples. Well, what can we say about the K independent number? Uh, these are the two generations we were speaking about. Well, these are uh, more general, in fact, because in this case are for any polynomial. And these are due to this author, which is a recent paper. Uh, this uh, we, we use as before the minimum of the values taken by this polynomial on the mesh, different of the uh, spectral value. We also use uh, these two quantities, the maximum and the minimum of the, of the, uh, the diagonal entries of P of A. In, 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 always, you know, in all the cases, P is uh, it's supposed to be a polynomial of degree K. And so for the K-independent number, we have an inertial type bound that generalizes the Vekovic bound uh, the uh, standard Vekovic bound and also a ratio type bound which generalizes the, the Hodman bound. Uh, note that in all the in, in these bounds, in these bounds are uh, as I said I said uh, now, just now, these bounds are invariant under the scaling on a, or and or translating the polynomial. You see, you can multiply the polynomial by a constant or you can translate the polynomial by a constant in both cases, in both cases, and you get the same bound. And in particular, what is more? In particular, if G is K partially well regular, this, uh, the diagonal of these matrices, the diagonal of these matrices is constant, okay? Recall that P is a polynomial of degree K here. And then this, uh, this, um, values are constant and are equal to any uh, entry of the diagonal and it's just the trace of p of a divided by n of course uh, and then we can simplify the the bounds in the following way for the case of k partially well regular uh, with diameter d and, and this spectrum uh, both of uh, the ratio on the inertia bound can be uh, given as a kind, a kind of co linear combination of the multiplicities. So uh, if you have a polynomial of degree K satisfying this, this condition, the trace of zero, then uh, the K independent number is bounded by this uh, expression. You see, you, this is only one uh, or, or zero because this is the heavy side function, okay? But in fact, it's it's a, you can see them as a kind of, com, of a linear combination with uh, the multiplicities with integer coefficients, but of course, with in fact, with binomial coefficients. And what happens at the bend, the bound is best possible when P is the sign polynomial. So, so the sign polynomial is uh, uh, justified by trying to match to minimize this bound. In the context, I recall that we are now in the context of K partially well regular, well regularity. And similarly, and similarly, uh, when you have a polynomial satisfying these conditions, uh, then the ratio bound can be, uh, uh, can be computed in this way. And then in this case, the bound is best possible when P is the minor polynomial, okay? 
So these two results for k partially well regular would justify uh, uh, the the use in this context of the sign or and the minor polynomial respectively. Well, what happens with uh, this kind of polynomial and this other kind of polynomials? Well, uh, note that in, in both cases, we are trying to, to minimize something. Here we try to, to minimize the number of non-zero values of the polynomial uh, at the mesh. Here we try to maximize these this, uh, traces. So, uh, moreover, both are, are uh, consent to uh, the same parameter. So, uh, it could be expected that a good polynomial S provides a good polynomial F and vice versa. And we concentrated in, on, in this question recently. Uh, these are just the, 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 the linear relation sheets uh, between S and F. When S satisfies this, uh, the, the condition of the sign polynomial, then this satisfies the condition of the minor polynomial. And then you get what we would call the ratio band, but using the sign polynomial or a polynomial satisfying the same condition and vice versa. When you have F satisfying this condition, then this satisfies the condition of a sign polynomial and this could be seen, seen uh, could be seen as the uh, inertia bound, but using uh, the minor polynomial or the polynomial uh, of approximation of it. Okay, then this uh, led us to define what we call Vekovic and Holman or graphs or, or for short CH graphs. And a CH a case CH graph is no more than a graph where the k sign polynomial and k minor polynomial are uh, linearly dependent, are essentially the same because the only difference between one and other is a, is a linear uh, uh, formula, a linear uh, uh, combination. And, and moreover, uh, and, and moreover, so they give the same inertial and ratio bounds. Uh, besides, if besides the, the these bounds are both tight, then we speak about the tight K C H graph. Okay, so this uh, would be would represent uh, uh, is a uh, uh, in the study of what what possible relationship or I are in between the inertia and ratio bounds. Uh, and in fact, this is a, this notation is was introduced by uh, recently, but in fact, there are all results that uh, that uh, say something about uh, this kind of graphs. For instance, this is, is, is uh, trivial, as almost trivial because in the case of regular graph and K1, we use uh, a multiple of, of X as a polynomial or of X as a polynomial is uh, is also very easy to to realize that all bipartite regular graph with even diameter that is without uh, again with without zero eigenvalues are tight one uh, CH graphs and the more important and interesting is this result of Hammers and Hyman Him, Himan, Himan. Uh, to show that if G is a strongly regular graph with maximum uh, set U of independent vertices, then both the inertial and ratio bounds are tight, if and only if the graph induced by uh, U, the, the complement of U is, is also strongly regular. In this case, it is easy to prove that, uh, well, it is clear that the, the, the sign and the and the uh, minor polynomials are linearly related. And so this would be a, a non-trivial case of uh, one th strongly uh, or one th graphs, okay? 
and the new results, some of the new results are these ones. Uh, uh, we managed to prove that the old graphs with even degree D are, this is a context uh, we will see a little later. Quasi all are tight, but by sure are D minus one VH. Uh, and it seems that uh, quasi all are also tight. And another example are uh, the case of antipodal distant regular graphs without diameter are, uh, in this case, are tight, D minus one VH graphs. And these are two uh, minor uh, examples also. And we, we will concentrate in the rest of the talk in these two cases, okay? Uh, note that these results uh, consent to the case K equal one, and these other results consent to the case K equal B minus one. Note that in this case, we are uh, investigating the number of vertices, the maximum number of vertices at diameter D in fact. So these are also called uh, uh, D spreads or, or D clicks in the, of the graph. And uh, one of the work which is in progress is to try to, to investigate other cases between one and D minus one. This is, could be also uh, seen as uh, an open problem or work in progress. Uh, also, it, it, it happens finally for the case of equality of, of e equal uh, one, k equal one, that this, uh, the, this family of, of a strongly regular graph with these parameters, this is the number of vertices, this is the degree, this is triangular free, you see. And then all these graphs could be one CH graph. But in fact, the bad news that they, in fact, the only known graphs of this family are for k for n equal one with the Peterson uh, with these parameters, for k equal two, it is the Messner graph with these parameters. And uh, with Professor Brower, we discussed this, discussed this situation and he noted that these graphs are, in fact, substituents of the crane graphs without triangles. And these graphs are only known uh, for R equal one, what is the Klebs graph, for R equal two, that is the Heyman sim graphs, as I mentioned before, in fact, for the case when the ratio and the ratio bound uh, does not coincide and the ratio bound is better than the, the, the ratio bound. For R equal three, no example exists, and nothing is known for R greater than three. So this is a we could be seen as another open problem. Try to find what happens uh, for uh, R greater than three. If you look at the list of a strongly regular graph on the web page of Professor Brower, you will see that uh, the other graphs could exist. There is no contradiction about uh, the they are feasible parameters and they cannot be proved uh, neither the existence or the non-existence. Well, uh, for the case of, of uh, maximal independent vertices, that is k equal d minus one, uh, we managed to prove the result. These results are, are uh, Corollaries are deduced from the from the previous results using uh, some polynomials which are approximations of the of the minor or the same polynomials. Not are not necessarily the same, but sometimes are the, are equal to them, but not always. But the results have the advantage of of not having to solve any linear pro uh, any linear uh, programming problem. But uh, it's, uh, uh, it's only bounds with the multiplicities. You see, the, with the alpha sub d minus one is upper bounded for the for the uh, multiplicities with even index. This would be a kind of inertial bound. And 
uh, and also we have these other bounds for the with the multiplicity with uh, odd indents. Okay, this is again, and we will see later. These are computed data, are moment like parameters computed by using only the eigenvalues. When you put here the maximum uh, value, possible value, uh, and in the case of all regular graphs, you, you have this. Uh, these are two particular cases. But the interest of these two particular cases uh, is that in some cases, these uh, inequalities are equalities. And this happens precisely uh, by using, by considering the old graphs. So recall that these are well, very well known family of, of graphs, this uh, particular family of what they are called Nexer, Nexer graphs. But uh, we investigated also the Nexer graph, but it seemed that this, uh, this kind of, of the old graphs are very special between the Nexer graph for, for, uh, in our context, I mean. Uh, in the case of the old graph, uh, you remember that the, the vertices are the L minus one subsets of uh, two L minus one set, and the adjacencies are defined by void intersection. And we prove that uh, this uh, the, the independent number of, of these graphs uh, are are upper bound for this for these quantities. Okay. And moreover, in, the, in, our, in one of our, our recent work, it was shown that these bounds of the, pro, of the uh, above proposition, I have to say that in, in, for even, for even uh, D plus one, or I mean for D or D, uh, this would be CH graphs. I mean the sign and the, the minor polynomial coincide. Uh, up to a cost uh, to a linear combination, but moreover, he, in the case of this of these values for L, it was proved, uh, it was shown, sorry, what find found that the bounds are also tight for all these values. Okay, for all these values of the of the odd graphs. And moreover, of course, it's, it's also for for L equal to that is case three. And for L equal three, that is better said. And so this leads us to to the to state the following conjecture: a setting for L equal five, the the minus one independent number of the O graph uh, attains these bounds here. Okay, would be would be tight. This is this is for this is concerning uh, this is. Uh, result concerning uh, odd graphs. And finally, concerning the, the other case of uh, antipolar graphs, we have this uh, result in this case. Uh, uh, we suppose that G is more regular with this spectrum uh, with maximum uh, Spectrally maximum diameter. Remember that the diameter is uh, always uh, at most the, the number of eigen, different eigenvalues minus one. So this, in this case, we call that the diameter is spectrally maximum. So a graph with the, uh, with this diameter and this num this number of the minus one independence, what we call R, R, then we can give the bounds for the multiplicities, this bound and this other bound for the even, we could call even multiplicities and odd multiplicities. This doesn't depend of, of R and this uh, does, okay? Uh, and what is interesting and when you have equality, Where you have here equality and the mean number of vertices at distance d from every vertex equal r minus one, then uh, the equalities here uh, 
occurs if and only if G is an R antipodal distant regular, uh, distant regular graph. In fact, uh, you have equalities here. You can remove here the condition of, of well, regularity and it, it's, it suffices to put or only that uh, to, to require that only that G is regular, regular graph. So a regular graph satisfying this condition, then, uh, and this other condition uh, would be a, an a antipodal distance regular graph. Uh, let me recall again, I think it was here. Uh, here, you have, uh, here you have the, the value of this uh, moment light parameter. You see, pi is the product of the differences, the distance between this eigenvalue, either i and the other eigenvalues. These are the moment uh, light parameters computed only by using the eigenvalues. And what happens that in the case of antipodal distant regular graphs, antipodal distant regular graph, uh, this, this, uh, the multiplicities only depend on the eigenvalues by using these parameters. Oh, as, I, as I, I we see here, okay. When you have equalities, uh, the multiplicities only depend on the, on the eigenvalues. And these are some of the recent references. These, these two are in this uh, work in progress or already submitted. And, uh, and uh, you want to, to have more detail, you, you can look at the, at, the, at the references. Okay. Well, if that is all, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Okay. Are there any questions? Oh. I have uh, one start off. So you have, uh, is there sort of a rough idea as to why, as to how you start approaching uh, the non-extreme cases where K is not one or D minus one? Sorry, I, I don't understand. I, so for sorry. the uh, KCA, when the KCA is tied, you have some results for when it's uh, K is one and some results when it's D minus one. You mentioned kind of quantifying some other results further in between. Uh, well, it, we have some sporadic examples between, but we don't have a, a, a until now we don't have any general result. It's a we have some examples where, uh, where it happened for, for instance, for a K equal two and so, but uh, we, for, for instance, we try with the Nessar graphs recently, but the problem with Nessar graphs in general is that uh, basically almost always they have diameter two. And so you have many, many few, uh, many, uh, many, uh, small, uh, the, the diameter is, is very small. And so the the number of eigenvalues, oh, sorry, the number of eigenvalues is, is larger in general, but the diameter in general is very small. So you, you don't have room, okay? You don't have room to speak about tight, tightness in this case. Okay. Uh, but we are in, in trying to look at, uh, at other intermediate examples, of, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the, the, I, I was not exhaustive about the different results involving all these kind of polynomials. And also I didn't comment about all the relationships between the four families. There are more, more relationships than the, the one commented. For instance, for, with the alternating polynomial, you can also approximate <coughs> the minor polynomial, for instance. Okay. There are other relationships and almost by sure there are other 
characterization results to be investigated by using these polynomials. For instance, uh, for instance, just to mention one, one, one more result. You see, you see here this, uh, we, uh, we investigated, for instance, uh, when this polynomial is greater than n, n minus one, then you have the diameter. So a natural question is what happens when this, you have equality here? because sometimes you have equality. Uh, you have equality, you cannot infer this, this bound for the diameter. But uh, even so, uh, we define a kind of graph we call the uh, boundary graphs, and we, we, we managed to prove some structure about what, what happens when you get equality. And basically the idea is when you get equality, the diameter is not K, not, not equal K, because there are a few vertices at distance more than K. For instance, one vertex. This is the case of the antipodal, for instance. No, you have uh, you have one one only one vertex at maximum distance. And so in this case, the diameter is is not the specter is uh, one one uh, unity greater, but but only for one vertex. Okay, <laughs> and thing like that, and thing like that. Uh, here also, uh, there is a characterization of antipodality here when you k here when you when you have k equal d minus one here, and then uh, this have, you have equality here we can also infer some kind of distance regularity also. Very interesting. Another, no another, another interesting perhaps comment to, to be done here is that uh, it is well known that the graph is distance regular if and only if all the the, the, all the distance polynomials, the predistant polynomial evaluated at, at A give yet yeah, the, the corresponding distance matrices. But in this case, we managed to prove that you only using this condition, you can also infer the same. Okay? But the, thing like that, thing like that in general. <laughs> 